I'm Leonard Garrison, professor of flute at the Lionel Hampton School of Music at the University of Idaho. And I'm offering you practice guidelines on the Idaho Music Education Association Allstate Etudes for Flute. Just a few words at first about your general preparation. The more prepared you are, the more confident you will be. And rather than leaving your practicing to the last minute, practice early. At first, practice details. Stop to fix every mistake. Slow down. Mark suggestions in your music. Practice with a metronome. Record your playing and listen for proper rhythms and dynamics. Eventually, you need to practice performing. So that's a different thing than just stopping every time you practice. It's going straight through your music, but only after you've solved all your technical problems. In front of a small audience, your friend, your teacher, parent, dog, or cat, go straight through each etude without stopping. Do this several times before the audition. Now the first element on the audition is a chromatic scale from low C to high C using slurred 16th notes, ascending and descending. So for guidance on this, go to my other YouTube video found on my YouTube channel. Right now, I'd like to talk about the two etudes that are required music for this Allstate audition, uh, both by Ernesto Kehler. The first is the etude in B flat major, as it appears in Voxman Selected Studies, page 20. Now, flutist and composer Ernesto Kehler, who lived from 1849 to 1907, wrote some of my favorite flute etudes. He was born in Italy, but spent most of his career in St. Petersburg, Russia. His music is melodic, even operatic, allowing one to sing on the flute. This particular etude is the seventh from his set of 25 romantic etudes in modern style, Opus 66. He entitled the piece, In the Moonlight, and it requires a luminous tone quality shimmering, of course, with vibrato. Everything must be legato, even the difficult wide leaps. There are few dynamic markings, but each phrase must have a definite shape. And I've added these dynamic nuances in my edition of the music, which you can download at my website, leonardgarrison.com, where you can also find a written performance to guide to go along with this YouTube video. So let's talk about some details. Throughout this piece, use the thumb B flat. So notice this is the thumb B natural position, and here's the B flat position. And this is, fingering is preferable in this piece to the, what we call the one and one B flat with the first finger in the left hand and the first finger in the right hand. Don't use that one, but instead the thumb B flat without this first finger in the right hand. Um, if you're not used to this, I encourage you to persist and learn how to use this fingering because it will result in greater technical facility and a smoother legato. So you might start by practicing the key or the scale of the key of the piece, B flat major. I'll show you a B flat major scale in two octaves. And notice my thumb. So the way to use that fingering is merely keep your thumb in that same position for every note you play, um, except of course for C and C sharp. Now the tempo marking of the piece, Andantino Mosso, 
is a little faster than andante, which means walking. So practice at first in six eighth note beats per measure until you can play at eighth equals 144, and then try at two beats to the bar at dotted quarter note equals 48, which is the same tempo as the eighth note tempo I just mentioned. Now, at the beginning of the piece, it's marked dolce e con espressivo, which means sweetly and expressively. It is extremely important to coordinate breathing and phrasing. I have marked breathing spots in my edition, and so please follow these markings and avoid breathing in random places. Now, to begin your practicing, try the basic crescendo diminuendo shape that you are going to apply to the first two measures of the piece on their main notes, merely B flat going to an A. Put expressive weight on the downbeat of measure two as it signals a change of harmony. Practice this shape with a tuner to make sure to keep consistent intonation. The embouchure, or how you hold your lips, functions as a valve to adjust the size of the lip opening, smaller for soft notes and larger for loud notes. Thus, the airspeed and intonation remain consistent. Now, the next step is to apply this to the notes that are actually in measures one and two, and then measures three and four. Notice that the grace notes in measure two are not fast. Play them as 30 second notes. In measure five, build all the way to forte and then make a sudden or a subito piano on the downbeat of measure six. For ease of fingering, keep the right hand third finger down throughout the second half of measure five. Don't clip the ends of the slurs in measure six, but rather make long notes here. Sustain the quarter notes so that they lead smoothly to the subsequent eights. Now, in measures seven to eight, duplicate the crescendo subito piano. In measure eight, don't just whack those accents, but rather use expressive emphases on the accent and notes. And the way to do that is using vibrato. Like a sigh. Kurle, the composer of this etude, marks measures eight through 10 with a diminuendo. So I have marked the beginning of this up to mezzo piano to leave room for a gradual taper. Don't get too soft too soon. Keep the lower notes strong enough to match the, the high Fs. Take extra care to achieve a perfect legato in these measures. Slowly practice each wide interval E flat to F, C to F, and A to F. Making sure 
that there are no grace notes in between and that the embouchure changes are coordinated with the finger changes. In measure 11, the beginning passage returns, so they use the same shaping of phrases. In measure 15, prepare the difficult low C sharp by moving your pinky to the C sharp key one note ahead of time during the B flat. Then you'll be ready for your low C sharp. Then from the C sharp to the E natural, slide your pinky from the C sharp key to the D sharp key, um, taking care to move your ring finger in coordination. So putting together the notes in that measure, And notice there's a good crescendo in that measure, followed by a subito piano for the last two bars. Allegando here means broaden. So don't rush here. And if you've been counting in two, this is a good place to start counting in six beats to the measure. For the grace notes, I like using the second trill key, C, D, C. But the danger here is going too fast. These grace notes don't have to be really fast. Well, we've heard lots of details in this piece. Let's put everything together now. Now for a contrast, we go to the same composer, Ernesto Kehler's Etude in E Major, which appears on page 33 of Voxman's Selected Studies. This etude is the last one of Kehler's same set of 25 romantic etudes in modern style, Opus 66. Since E major, the key of the piece, is less familiar to many band musicians, spend some time practicing E major scales to become comfortable with the finger patterns. Notice here that I'm using the proper F sharp fingering which is with my ring finger in the right hand, R3, instead of my middle finger, R2. I'll show you the difference. R3, R2. The sound is flat, or the pitch is flat, and the sound is dull. So this is the proper fingering, even though it's a little more difficult. 
practice this piece slowly at first, eventually working it up to the required tempo of quarter equals 120. Kirler called this a Russian dance, and he knew what he was talking about since he lived in Russia. Allegro vivo means fast, literally cheerful, and lively. And he marks also con allegrezza, which means with cheerfulness. The etude starts on beat two, so think of this as a pickup leading into the downbeat and starting with a light tongue. One aspect of this piece that you should pay attention to is the grace notes all the way through the piece. These need to be extremely quick. So let's look in measure eight. And so on. So it would take away from the rhythmic vitality of the piece to play a slow grace note. So all of the grace notes in the piece um, should be practiced in their own right. For instance, in the last line. All very quick grace notes. Another aspect of this piece is the use of alternate fingerings to facilitate technique and uh, help correct intonation foibles. Now, keep your right hand, third finger, or R3, down where E sharp falls between two F sharps. F sharp, E sharp, F sharp. I'm keeping this finger down. So that occurs at the very beginning of the piece. So just keeping this down leads to faster playing. And I have it marked throughout the etude in my edition where you should, it's, it says plus R3, that's what that refers to. Where there is a C sharp in between two Ds in measure 17, substitute the right hand first three fingers for the pinky. So play your C sharp this way. And this is what I call the right hand trick because moving from D to C sharp, you leave your right hand as is, just move your left hand. So D, C sharp, D is in the context to the piece, measure 17. Another fingering item here is the loud E's in measure 2 and 20. These will go really sharp unless you remove your right hand pinky or R4. So I'll show you the difference in pitch. Too sharp, right on pitch. And in the context of the piece, here's the beginning. Without the pinky on that high E. For the high G sharp at the very end, add the right hand second and third fingers, R2 and 3. This will also bring the pitch down so it's not too, too sharp. So lots of ideas about fingering. Dynamics are very important. A dynamic is not indicated at the beginning, but piano with a crescendo to forte is appropriate. Take care not to rush any crescendo passages. In measure six through eight and 24 through 28, bring out the melody in the low register with a full focus sound and play lighter in the higher notes. And then the parallel passage starting in measure 24. 
So really bring out the low notes. I like to practice them all on their own to practice full tone in the low register. I feel like I'm bouncing my air with each one of those low notes. Another place to balance registers is starting in measure 12. You've got a little segment that's in the low register, a little segment that's in the high register, and these have to match. So play louder in the low notes and softer in the high notes. For the long passages of 16th notes, practice beat to beat. In other words, go from the beginning of one beat and stop on the first note of the next beat. So let's try that in measure 16. And from the second beat to the second downbeat. And then, then, And then you can put the passage together. To make satisfying phrase endings in this piece, play eighth notes full length with vibrato on the downbeats of measures two, four, six, eight, and so on. Much nicer than playing very short on those notes. On the other hand, the grace note figures later on in the piece need a staccato lightness. Another place to look at is the coda or ending of the piece. Drive through this music with a bravura finish. You can almost think of a crescendo to the very end. Here's measure 24. Check your pitch with a tuner in the high register and play with a relaxed embouchure to avoid going sharp. One thing to avoid in the high register is pulling back into a smile. It makes the pitch very high. I'll show you the difference on a high E. Here's a smiley embouchure. And the tone is rather crass that way. But if I frown, bring my corners down and relax them. has a warmer feeling to it and also the pitch is much better it's much lower so again we've covered lots of details in this piece kind of bouncing around from one subject to the other let's put everything together here's the etude in E major Russian dance by Ernesto Kehler The last portion of the audition for the Idaho Allstate um, material on flute is a solo. And this is at your choice. A model solo is given on the IMEA website. It's the uh, Johann Sebastian Bach Sonata in E flat, first movement. I would encourage all of you to look at some videos on my YouTube channel that I've collected into a playlist called L'Atelier de Flûte, or in French, that means flute studio. I've recorded teaching videos of 13 beautiful French intermediate flute solos, and 
all of those pieces would be appropriate for the purposes of this audition. Another source that I would encourage you to look at is the repertoire list on my website, leonardgarrison.com. That covers everything that you need to prepare for the Idaho All-State Flute Audition. And so, good luck. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>